County Dublin-based trainer James McCauley outlines the impact which the prevalence of oilseed rape has had on his horses. James has recently installed a salt room and also explains some of the other steps being taken to deal with the issue. The horse were flying in February or March, I think with something like 11 winners in the space of two months. Like in, we don't go to many fixtures, you know, so we were literally nearly getting a winner every fixture we went to and then that started appearing I'm not into the farm and so when it was grown I wasn't sure what it was and then you started to see the, the bit of yellow coming out of it and since then I think we've had one winner you know, tipping away and getting the odd place horse but it's been a marked drop off in, in the performance. Horse that have never bled before, you know, you, you can see some bleeding and we'll be doing bits of scoping and that and you can see look, not massive bleeds but they're bleeding for, for no apparent reason, for no, no excessive work so there's, there's no doubt. I mean, you can smell it in the yard most mornings. I'm just glad that we have staff that it doesn't seem to bother because I've heard it affects that, you know, some people bad as well. So the staff are all right, they're tipping away. Well, one of the first things we've seen, because obviously when, when the horse were bleeding, they weren't, they weren't necessarily bleeding down the nose. But I'd say if we had 35 horses here, I'd say maybe 15 horses broke out in, in bits of rashes and we had the vets out just checking it and they had no real explanation for it. So they took samples and sent it away to the equine centre. And just while... While we were speaking to the equine centre then, just talking to Alan Clayton, I mentioned has anyone reported anything about rashes, we're getting them for no reason. And straight away he said, is it behind the saddle and on, on the rump? And I said, yeah, that's exactly where they were. He said, that's definitely down to the, the old seed rape. I mean, some of mine broke out in rashes that you wouldn't be able to bring them racing. You know, even if, you know, even if they weren't bleeding, you just wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't get them past the, the vet. So we took samples, sent them away and, it, I mean, I don't know what they, they came back with, but it was definitely down to that. The Irish Echo and Centre then asked to take a blood and send it down. And from, from the horse that we just seen, and they said the allergy levels were absolutely through the roof. I mean, they've never seen them so high. So, I mean, badly affected them. I think seven or eight of the horses then had on their noses, um, some of the skins are burning off them. But as I say, we're very close to it. I mean, I don't think we could get it any closer unless we grew it ourselves. So, but definitely, definitely affected them that way. We actually got a salt room in, and I can't say that it's any miracle cure, but I do feel that it's helping us. My dad is very good at, at building things, so just don't build it up in the weekend. And we have a stall now for five horses, so it's grand. You can throw five horses on, go out, ride two lots out, and come back in and, and take them off. So it, it doesn't involve too much work. You know, if everyone grabs a horse and throws it on, then after half an hour, then go up and take them back down. So I don't know. Look, it hasn't solved everything for us with regards to the oil seed rate, but I do think that's given us a a good push through it. The Irish Equine Centre were out. They're, I think they're going to do a, a broad spectrum of 10 yards that, that are affected with the rapeseed oil. So they were out last month and they're going to come out every month now for the next three or four months. And they're testing how far, you know, that 50 metres, 100 metres, 150 metres, and just testing how far the, the pollen and, and that is, is travelling in the wind. So it'll be interesting. I'm not sure what can be done about it, but it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. I mean, I think everybody knows there's a problem. It's just, how do we sort it out? We've never had the problem. Probably the last time the farmers around here were grown, it, I hadn't got the license, so it didn't affect us at all. So this is the first time that, that it's appeared. But I mean, there's, there's no doubt it's affected us. I'd like to think once the, the oil seed rate disappears now, the horses should bounce back to farm. But I'd say we've got rid of, I'd say we've got rid of 10, 12 horses during that. Um, might just scale back. Don't really like being reliant on what other farmers do to, to impact where we're going. So there is a possibility now that we might scale back our own horses and just talk, we might put a swimming pool in, maybe get an equine treadmill and do a bit of a rehabilitation center and maybe do a bit of treat, pre-training for, for other people. We have all the facilities here, we have good staff here. So it's quite possible now. I mean, I know they may not grow for another three, four years, but don't really, don't really like being reliant on other farmers dictating what we're doing.